the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Like the video you are about to watch. With many rooms, living and life is like a house with many rooms. You look at this beautiful building, you find out that there are so many doors. Is that true? And every one of these doors require keys. Are we in agreement? Yes. If you are in a house and you have only the key to the restroom, if all you want to do is ease yourself, then you are all right. But if peradventure you are hungry and the only key you have is the key to the restroom, you are in trouble. Is that true? If the only key you have is the key to the restroom and yet you have visitors, where do you keep them? You are in the house, but yet you are still in trouble. So just being in the kingdom does not guarantee you're excelling. You must have the keys to be effective. John chapter 10 and verse 10. The Bible says, the thief cometh not. Listen carefully. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, but I am come, Jesus speaking now that ye may have life that is a level and then it says that ye may have it more abundantly everybody say the keys of the kingdom keys represent instruments of access you don't stand and cry before a door please look up how many of you have had a situation in your life where you misplace the key to your door or to your car or to anything you consider important has it happened to anyone you know how frustrating it is? You are well dressed. You are happy. And suddenly the key to your car is not there. An expensive car that you bought four or five or ten million. But a small key that you can fabricate. Less than two thousand naira. Frustrates you and you are standing there. Looking helpless. Keys may be small. But they open giant doors. Something you put in your pocket can stop you from opening a door that was not difficult to carry and come and mount. Yet a key stops you from access. People have stood in front of their doors from morning till night because the person holding the key was not there. And they were patient to allow the person travel even from one state to another. You argue and you are angry but the door does not open. I pray for you. Every door that has refused to open in your life and in ministry, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the keys that you will receive, those doors will be open heater and teeter in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Doors don't respond to tears. Doors don't respond to time. Time does not open doors. It only reveals how long you are ignorant. For 38 years, a man was lying down at the pool of Bethesda. You will think time will push him there. Time does not change anything. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Not through time. 38 years, there were people who were born just at the time that man was lying down. They came and summoned the courage to dive into that pool and left. How could you be so close to a door and yet it does not open? Read your Bible. The Bible says when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we Bible students? The Bible says how that the angels came to visit Lot. And these people who dwell there saw the angels. And they said, come and give us these angels. We want to have them. And Lord said, no, don't, don't, don't bring that kind of abomination. I will even give my daughters. Do what you want to do with them. And the man said, no, it's the angels we want. 
The Bible says the angel struck them with blindness. Here's what your Bible says. And they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were in front of a door, but because they did not have eyes to see. How could you be so close to lifting? So close to the help of your destiny? So close to the grace that can lift you? And yet still weary yourself in front of the door. Are we blessed? The keys of the kingdom. When you handle these keys, your life will become a wonder first to you. First to you and then to others. Let me tell you this. The keys of the kingdom work regardless of geography. The keys of the kingdom work regardless of gender. They work regardless of status. They have a mysterious lifting power. It will push beyond systems and structures until you rise to reflect the glory and the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The keys of the kingdom. And I'm going to be sharing five of them. These keys that make for efficiency in ministry, they are not opinions. Number one, they are principles that are based on the integrity of the word of God. Number two, they are principles that come from the life of men and women historically and then alive with proven track records. These are keys that have been tested. They are not opinions. They walk. Can we look at some of them? Number one, the first essential to an effective ministry and even an effective life is not preaching. No, it's not a church building. No. The first key to really being effective in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on God. The first key to being effective in ministry, let me tell you this, the rudiments of ministry can become idolatry even to the minister. Preaching can become an idol. Concerns about church administration can become an idol. These are subtle systems of distraction. The first key to ministry is a genuine encounter with the God of heaven. Genuine encounter with the God of heaven. Genuine encounter with the God of heaven. Romans chapter 8, please. Give us from verse 5 to 8. Romans chapter 8. We'll try to rush. Our time is gone so that we can pray. Romans chapter 8 from verse 5 to 8. An encounter with God does so many things to you. Among other things, it prunes the flesh. The flesh is the way of thinking that comes from all kinds of mundane motivations. Now, I say this with every sense of responsibility and regard. Whatever drives you into ministry is what will sustain you there. If you get into ministry just because you are frustrated and you are tired, federal government did not give you a job, you tried business, it did not work, and you said instead of doing 2-0, let me just go to the vineyard. You might not last there. The motivation that drives you to ministry is what will keep you. It's not a secret that not everybody is motivated to ministry by a genuine encounter. For many people, they believe that once you're in ministry, you, you get free honorarium, free gifts, they celebrate birthday for you, they build a house for you, and they say, what a cheap route to success. Very quickly. Just because you can register a name in CAC does not mean you have a ministry. Just because there is one person who believes in you does not mean you are in ministry. You must prune your motivation. The first motivation for ministry is God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Not Mike. In the beginning, God. Not land. In the beginning, God. Not anointing. Not Rema. In the beginning, God. That formula must remain true in your life. In the beginning of your business, God. Not products. Not services. Don't bring God somewhere in the equation of your life. No. His jealousy does not allow him to be somewhere in your life. If he is not first 
then he's not interested in the beginning god are we blessed in the beginning those who have been mightily used by god all across the earth today are men and women who will tell you they fought ministry for a long time when god called them they refused they say god i don't want this trouble of ministry just leave me with my life or allow me to serve i can be an usher in a church and i'm satisfied and god says i still called you let me tell you this if god calls you and you are in a hurry to answer you really didn't hear him well because if you really understand the instructions the flesh cannot fulfill that instruction the proof that you had god is that your heart will even fail you because god does not talk to you like he's talking to a man he talks to you like he's talking to himself god says go and raise me 10 million people by what strength it's dangerous to hear god because you can't disobey if you don't hear him you can use an excuse and say god i was not aware i didn't hear you but now you had him clearly in the beginning god the fathers of faith all around this nation dead and alive will tell you it was their hunger and their pursuit for god it was not even a desire for fame it was not a desire for a name please listen please listen please listen it's not a desire for if if there are many other ways to be famous if it is the call of God, the purity of your heart, and only encounters purify you. Mm. You may not know your tendencies. It is an encounter that purifies you. Are we together? In Exodus chapter 3, when you read, the Bible tells us that this idol worshiper who ran away from Egypt... The one who was being prepared to be the next pharaoh his name is moses moses was being prepared to be the next pharaoh i hope you know that before moses met the god of the bible he was already excelling as a student who they were training to be the next pharaoh he even wrote books that are being used today there are occultic books that were written by moses in his hedonistic state And then one time the Bible says when he ran away, he was at the backside tending his father-in-law's sheep, Jethro. And God used an encounter to lure him. He saw a bush that was burning, yet the bush would not be consumed. He said, I've not seen this in Egypt. Egypt is a house of wizardry, and yet I've not seen this dimension. He said, I will turn aside and see. Let me tell you how God draws men to himself. He will expose you to a dimension that you did not even pray for. When you taste of it, he will hide it back. That hunger will draw you to say, what happened? I went for a meeting and a dimension I know I don't walk in. Suddenly I saw something and God hides it back. Why did it not happen again? It will draw you. It's how the spirit lures men to know him. Shela skadabaranto shedebreketusiata. Shavranda segedebalakatusia. A time in your life for one week everybody is blessing you every week it's like you touch the key in the spirit by mistake after one week it stops god is showing you this can be an experience but come it's the way the spirit beckons on us for many of us you enjoy the temporary result and you stop there encounters encounters are supernatural experiences that crystallize the reality of God because it is the God you know that you would discuss with Pharaoh it is the God you know don't stand before Pharaoh until you have met the burning bush Pharaoh is not a child you will not bring a rod and Pharaoh will allow people to leave no when Moses met the God of the Bible watch this he said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And God saw that when he turned aside, he said, Moses, instruction number one, take off your shoes. 
You know what your shoes are? Your shoe is a symbol of your experience so far. And what you know about God and ministry said, take it away. I want to show you something you have not seen. Do you have the unashamedness to cancel everything you have known and learn afresh? Oh, but I, I've been born again for 30 years. God says nonsense. When you come to me, you start again. Don't add me to the many gods you met in Egypt. So that you think I am this and that. Egyptians had thousands of gods. And Moses said, which one are you? He said, me? Don't add me to those gods. Take off your shoes. I want to introduce you to a god you did not meet. Your lecturers did not teach you that one in Egypt. They taught you about Ra, the gods of fertility, the gods of thunder. Don't classify me as one of them. I am that I am. Search your archives. If there is a name like that hmm. you know you have met God when he gives you a name that name becomes your weapon of victory listen our assignment is that in our lifetime our lives are able to give God a new name that will hand over to our children it's not just the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob alone something about your experience should give God a name and you will tell your child, I have known God as this. Are we blessed? Encounters. Many of us know a theoretical God. That's why we're embarrassed on stage. We call all kinds of names. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Rose of Sharon. My God. My King. Waymaker. Just because someone sang it, he must become your God. But the people that do know their God, their God. Paul said, my God shall supply. I don't know which one you believe, but it is my God. Moses said, who shall I go and tell Pharaoh had sent me? And he said, when you stand before Pharaoh, tell him, I am that I am what kind of a name is that what is I am that I am listen a name is a classification a name is a dimension of specialty when you say a pediatrician that means that your specialty is children so Egypt named God after their specialty so when Moses was saying what is your name it means what is your area and God said me if I'm limited then it means someone created me I am I am. It is your faith that gives me dimensions. I am Rafa. I am Jaira. I am. I leave it to you. Let your faith open up the vast possibilities that are in me. Are you blessed? The mysteries of the kingdom. Genuine ministry starts with an encounter, not a sermon, not ordination. Even if it is one bottle of oil that is poured on you, it's not guaranteed that you'll be effective in ministry. Ordination is a system of authorization. Oil cannot ordain. It is an encounter that is a real ordination. Oil is a seal. Because when you stand before Pharaoh, he is going to ask you. I hope you know. Pharaoh will say, who sent you? My Geo. Pharaoh will say, nonsense. You don't know this is Egypt. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. Who sent you? My sponsor. Who sent you? My family members. Who sent you? The prophet who had a vision for me. He says, no. When Pharaoh, when Moses had that encounter... He now says, now go on the strength of what you have seen. Go and tell Pharaoh, I am, has sent you. And don't be surprised when he's stubborn and hardens his heart. Moses took his rod. Do you know what it means? 40 years ago, the man ran out of Egypt. They've not seen him for 40 years. Now his half-brother, the then Pharaoh had died. His half-brother, Ramesses, was now the Pharaoh. And suddenly they see this strange man coming back we know this face 
were you not one of the students that were, ah and he goes to stand before pharaoh dear her brother good to see you 40 years ago i was a timid idol worshiper but somewhere in the backside of the mountain i had an encounter i have returned not just as your brother but as a savior i met this deity called i am and here is the instruction let my people go Ramesses clapped and said i see that you have really been you have really been at the backside of the mountain let me remind you that this is egypt the center of wizardry and moses said i've spoken too much let the rods continue the conversation he threw the rod on the ground it became a serpent you would think pharaoh say ah i respect this god pharaoh laughed and said nonsense janus jambers come and show this man he's in egypt he threw the rod it became a serpent but something happened the rod of moses swallowed the rod of egypt and yet did not increase in size and he took it back that was a statement of the superiority of the power of i am explain it how does a rod swallow another rod the master over time and matter is speaking and he said wow this is impressive you are giving us an assignment but it's not enough for an exodus moses went back and moses told god what kind of a stubborn man is this he says that's why you need an encounter with me let me tell you why many people are weary in ministry their encounters are not strong so after two years with just five members you're saying lord i'm leaving this i'm going to dust my cv my uncle just got won an election i would just meet him and say i'm tired of this vineyard thing let me tell you this when you encounter the god of the bible you will die there your conviction will be so strong it's like occultism you can't reverse again i've been initiated into this body of truth i'm not there just for the results i have no plan b again encounters are we blessed supernatural encounters i've had the privilege of meeting many many men of god across this nation across africa and respectfully speaking across the globe and anyone you know who is doing so much for god will tell you they had solid encounters first encounters through scripture but very dramatic encounters when you stand in front of the mountain that frustrates you in ministry it is that encounter that supplies faith suddenly you remember you are standing before that crusade ground there is a dead body there are people on wheelchair and there are enemies who are saying now finally it's an opportunity make sure you videotape this rubbish so that the world will know that you are not anointed you remember was i not in one room when jesus came to me did he not give me the grace suddenly faith will rise and you will hold that man and say look i'm not coming in my strength stand up and that becomes the story that shifts your ministry to a next level pray in the spirit in one minute encounters pruning your desires encounters deadening the flesh giving you capacity to be spiritual hallelujah listen listen to me one of the benefits of encounters is that it sustains the ability to kill the flesh so that your motivation is so purified there is nothing mundane nothing mundane at all i stand before the god of heaven and I'm, I'm talking to leaders and pastors i have had no desire bishop for fame or name my phone is full of text messages every day i respond to an average of six to seven hundred text messages every day full of oh you are this you are that and i look at it and i say oh dear May I not be deceived by all this? Because this is what destroys a lot of people. They didn't believe in you in your background. They said you will never make it. 
and you went into ministry to prove a point. So when you get that grace, you say, where are my family members? Ask Hannah. When she wanted a child just to prove to Penina she was not a man, God said, that's not enough reason for a child. Until she purified her motive. Lord, I hear you are looking for a prophet. Can my womb bring that prophet? She prayed once and a child came. Your motive and your motivation vetoes your fasting. Your motive vetoes your prayer, vetoes night vigil, vetoes your giving. I don't care what else you do. If your motive is wrong, you have missed it from day one. There are people who go to fast. They fast for 40 days. They fast for 7 days. They fast for 100 days. There's nothing wrong. But the motive is already corrupted. At best, you will encounter the grace that will take you back to pass through that refiner's fire to purify your motive. There is only one motive and one motivation for ministry. To see Jesus high, to see Jesus revealed, and to see him glorified. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. That has to be your motive. Lord, I'm not just looking for a fame. Fame. I'm not just looking for a name. Jeeps all around. Ministerial colleagues saying, ah, this man, you are not small, oh, you are successful. Those things are fringe benefits. And I tell you from the lens of eternity, it's nonsense. Yes. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. It's my one desire. That, that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. Every time I stand before God's people to teach, no matter where, my motivation is not a name. No. Joshua Selman is very secondary. All I want to see is that through my life, let me be a contributor that the nations will see jesus lifted the nations will see jesus glorified and i will be a contributor that you will inspire a generation to seek him passionately if you can do that then you have done well let's be honest with ourselves this morning and trust the lord to destroy these mundane motivations this is not an insult. Every time till tomorrow, when I go before God in my place of retreat, while people are clapping, Joshua Selma, you are this, I bow my knees and say, Lord, before I deceive myself, search my heart and tell me the truth about my state. Has my motivation become any other thing aside from you? And if God shows me I'm not embarrassed though, I don't go before him as Apostle Joshua Selman. No. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Oh Lord. Be lifted high. For you are holy. seen fame until you die to his will you have not seen honor until you die to his will these mundane pursuits that distract us and he becomes secondary the wedding the feast in cana john 2 is a warning to everyone 
Jesus was in that feast, but they forgot about him. They were rulers in the feast. And the Bible makes an interesting statement. And the wine finished. Yet churches were still being built. And the wine finished. Yet conferences were happening. And the wine finished. The wine to some people in the feast had finished. And yet activities were happening. And Jesus there was not even recognized. There were rulers. There was wine that had finished. But Jesus was not there. Then a group of people started saying something is wrong with this feast we are ordinary people but something is wrong jesus is not at the center of this feast they gathered themselves in the feast while many things were happening conferences conventions they came and met mary they said please lead us to jesus we are not confused about who should take the first place in this feast and he said no 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 go and do your thing and mary advised them whatever he tells you to do do when they met jesus jesus said why are you coming to me you go with your rulers keep building your churches keep holding your conferences forget about me and keep doing ministry and they said no we are not foolish we have discerned this feast the formation is not correct you are absent in it what is church without you what is conference without you what is ministry without you How, what is the, what are the branches without you and jesus said is that true now that you have given me attention, let me tell you how the miracle will start. It will not start with wine. Fetch water. There is a cleansing that must happen. The anointing, it will start with a purging first before it will become wine. Start with water. Fetch the water. And while you are moving with that water, suddenly you will find out that it's no longer water again. It will start with that purging of the spirit. And while it starts later on, you will see that it has become signs and wonders. It did not start as miracles and signs and wonders. It started as a purified motif. But while you are moving with that purified motif, suddenly you will see signs and wonders, prosperity and increase. Are we blessed? This is only the first cue. So don't you see God lifting and glorifying people and say they are lucky. I'm showing you the mysteries of the kingdom. Many times when we see God exalt people, we just ignore their sacrifices and their labor in the spirit and they say they are just lucky. I'm sure one senator or one politician just gave him one billion. Nonsense. Help that gentleman under the anointing. You don't just stand and say in the name of Jesus, signs and wonders, let blind eyes open. Just because you read it in the Bible. No, sir. No, sir. Shanas kene shalabranda gadusiata. Credo zebe hashina mahal katasibada gadusia. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. of life is death the price for all of God is all of you not your offering not your singing not your teaching my son give me your heart not your offering not your pulpit not the name of your ministry your heart is what I have the reason why you feel embarrassed because of ministry is because you are the one who has been taking the glory Whoever takes the glory should take the shame too. God cannot take the glory while I take the shame. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. Why do you claim he takes the glory when things happen and then you are embarrassed when things don't happen? It means he's not the one who has been taking the glory. Whoever takes the glory must take the shame. Are we blessed?
You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only Lord. Listen, I'm seeking you as a precious jewel. Not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, more than money. Jesus, more than conference. Jesus, if nobody knows Joshua Selman and they know Jesus through my life, I am satisfied. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold, and I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold, I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen, the Bible says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And it says, To run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says, Who for the joy that was before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. Co-laborers of the gospel, in these end times we must be careful. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Don't let me have it. Don't let me have it. Don't let me it's my prayer, it. Lord. That if it's not in your presence, I don't care how much it is. If it's not from your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Don't let me have it. For everything I, I need is in you. Every anointing you cannot give me, let it not come. Every lifting you cannot give me, let it not come. Every name you cannot give me, let it not come. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, will you please take the glory? I'm satisfied just to see you glory. People of God, let me speak to you with all humility. This is a minister's conference. I submit to you, I have seen honor. I have seen lifting. I have met kings. I have met nobles. I submit to you, it will take my contemporaries many lifetimes to see the lifting and the honor God has given me. But it means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I will close down Koinonia this night. If that's what God wants, I will close it a thousand times to preserve my relationship with God. Crowd, nonsense. Miracles, nonsense. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you this from my heart. If God tells me this is the last sermon I will preach in my life, no matter who begs me, I will not lift a mic again till Jesus comes. I love him more than it all. I was alone when the nations came and met me. I will still remain where they found me. No matter how great he lifts you, remain where they found you. They came and they met you in the place of hunger. Remain there. Don't relocate to a mundane office 
in the spirit and sit there. No. If they found you on your knees, remain there. No matter how lifted you are, remain there. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord, I will worship you. Nothing else has made but you, Lord. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance shortly. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. This is a pastor of conference. In the next five minutes, I'm going to leave you with your God. I don't know how you are going to cry before God and say, Father, touch my heart. Anything you find that is not the God of heaven, let it live my life. Cast your golden crowns. This is not I am apostle, I'm prophet. Leave that one. It's the nations that will call you that one. Cry before your maker. You don't have to kneel and lie down. Just make sure you are crying. Pour your heart like a drink offering. Don't be ashamed of your tears. So we are before the God of heaven. Don't do big man for him. He is the king of glory. The God of all flesh himself. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. Your glorious majesty. Leave your singing, leave your prophecy. I know you have raised people from the wheelchair. Just keep that one aside. I know God has honored you across the nations. Keep that one aside. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord. Of Lord. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. Make sure you're praying. Yeah, yeah. Lord, I surrender everything.
I surrender all to you everything I give to you Lord I surrender all to you break your alabaster box everything I give to you in this conference I'm withholding nothing withholding nothing will you give yourself away Allah shalanda ratasyata will you give yourself away so he can use you Will you give your time away? 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 So he can use you. Just two minutes and we're done. Many years ago, when a conference like this, it was in Kaduna. And whilst just pouring our hearts before the Lord, a song came by the Spirit that has represented a song of surrender. You have my everything. 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 Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Listen, anoint my everything, prune my everything. Rebuild my everything. Remake my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Sometimes you don't have words. You you lack the words. This is how great men are made they are not made by what they do on the pulpit they are made by the track record of their death in the secret place on the strength of that encounter you can walk in signs help them please signs and wonders when you take god seriously he will give you his presence you give him time he will give you an uncommon anointing an uncommon grace an unusual lifting that is the price for all of god help that lady that is the price for genuine spiritual power. Just one minute and we are done. You are not wasting your time. Believe me. Believe me. If you really came for an experience in the year that King Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord Lord what must die in my life for me to see you 
a king had to die for a prophet to see the Lord what must die in my life for me to see you we see the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain will you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain one minute and we're done cry your heart to your maker open the floodgates of heaven let it rain this is the air i breathe i stand in faith with our bishop and everyone who is here and we cry that we need you afresh everything we have replaced you with we ask for mercy bring us back to the place where you become the center of our pursuit bring us back to the place where you met us when you gave us encounters bring us back to that place so we bow as we enter the throne room yeah. and we cast ourselves down at your feet lord for you are holy thou art holy there is none like you in your, your presence, presence that is, is where, where I must be. be for the way of the Lord uh -huh. is the way <laughs> of wisdom I, I choose, choose the way of the Lord, Lord. I choose the way of the Lord. Hello, give Madonna. Hello, Hello, Madonna. Hello, Hello, Madonna. hallelujah in the name of Jesus at this point just sit down if you can if you can't sit down sit on the floor sit anywhere we may not have time to touch all five but let me touch at least one then we'll pray this is a ministers conference we must have the discipline the Bible says in the latter times men will not endure sound doctrine it takes endurance stamina I assure you of one thing you're not wasting your time there are transferences of graces It's when you go back you will see fire upon your altar I know the lion I know the lamb I know the lion I know the lamb I represent the lion, I represent the lamb, 
I preach for the lion, not for myself. I preach for the lamb. And I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I know the lion. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I know the lion. I know the And the elder tapped me and he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david he has prevailed and is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls thereof and i looked and i saw upon the throne a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which were the seven spirits of god this is the one we represent ministry is not politics don't let no politician bring you down you speak for the lion you speak for the lamb. You are not speaking for a parliament. It's not a senatorial district. The only thing higher than ministry on earth is a monarch. If you don't know who you stand for, politicians and businessmen will cheapen you with 100 million, 1 million, 1 building, 1 land. I represent the lion. I speak for the lion. I speak for the lamb. I stand for the lion. I stand for the lamb. A senator will come and go. A businessman will come and go. Hear me, brothers and sisters. A governor can only live for eight years in Nigeria. A dictator would not live for more than three decades. They will overthrow him. But when you are given the responsibility of representing the monarch of the universe, there is nothing superior to that call. You must know who you are. This is not some boastful thing, but it's an honor and a privilege. I live for the lion. I live for the lamb. I represent the lion. I represent the lamb. Look how we celebrate people. We say the governor, his excellency, was not able to make it. However, he sent a representative, the honorable uh, commissioner or minister or whatever. And you see people clap. And the same honor they would have given the governor, your excellency. If that minister donates 100 million, you don't say the minister donated 100 million. You say his excellency. Whether he discussed with the excellency or not is none of our business. All we know is that the excellency gave money. So every time you show up, you are not just the president of a ministry. That's too small an office. You are the spokesman for the monarch of the universe. He will refer nations to you for their healing. He will refer nations to you for mentorship. That you will mentor kings and nobles. How much salary can reward that office? How much gift can reward that office? Can I touch on one more aspect and we'll pray? This is past one. Just give me 10 minutes. Is that all right? Please sit down. I have to jump. I have five keys. I had five keys to share. But this first one, if we stop here, is a very powerful practice. Incorporate it as part of your spiritual growth process. Reproduce this same thing with your leaders. Call them. Oh, I'm busy for a convention. Tell them, leave it, come find a night vigil and all of you should cry before god upon the altar don't grow alone and leave your leaders they will be the ones the devil will use to pull you down grow with them when you pray let them watch you pray if they are tired let them sleep on the altar there number two the second mystery of the kingdom that is responsible for church growth responsible for exploits in ministry and efficiency in ministry oh dear well let me just mention this we may not have the time but let me mention it from exodus chapter 18 read from verse 1 to 27 the second point i won't explain it i'll just mention it and we'll go to the third the second point help them is build systems build systems 
leadership systems, administrative systems, Exodus 18, 1 to 27. The Bible talks about Moses. Moses was almost getting weary. Are we together now? Why? Because he had to manage and counsel people from morning till night. And Jethro, his father-in-law, gave him an advice. He said, Mr. Man, this approach, even though you are called and sent by God, but it will weary you. Set captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, captains over 50. Let them administrate. And then you can now handle the weightier matters of ministry. No man survives in ministry if you do not understand system building. There are many people who, if they are not there, if they are not there for one month, the ministry will die. So you can't go for training. So you can't attend other conferences that will build you too. If your absence creates a vacuum, then your presence is not doing much. Are we together? There are times that God will ask you to spend time with him for one week. You will not come out. The ministry should be so formidable that your absence, the only thing that will be missed is the unique expression of God's grace. Not that the entire structure will collapse. Build systems. In the early church, there was a quarrel among the Grecian women and the Jews because of the matter of tables. And the apostle said, no, 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 no. Let's, let's manage this well. Get seven men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. We'll set them over the affairs of welfare. But we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and of prayer. Years ago, because of the overwhelming demand, I used to do a lot of counseling. And it was Mondays, just once every week. I would start counseling from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Sometimes I'll be returning from administration. As I sit down, I may only stand up to go and ease myself. So many people, it was raising security concerns. It was raising a lot of things. And I said, no, there has to be a way out of this. Do not be afraid to train men. Some of them will rebel, but don't worry. You will reap what you sow, not where you sow. Just know that you will reap for sure. Are we together? Don't be afraid of raising people. Beware of just employing people. Raise people. There is a difference between a hireling and a son. Even if you employ people, let them go through the system that makes for sons. Otherwise, their heart will be on salary, not the vision. Build systems. Build systems. Build systems. Build systems. You outsource by building people build leadership systems don't blame everybody for the mistake of one person no sound goes off every leader suffers for it no when you build systems you can identify loopholes very easily are we together now so let me just stop there the third is impact the third essential for effective ministry mark chapter one the full text is the whole verse but let me just read a few portions mark chapter one you are not in ministry if you are not making impact. If you are not in ministry, if you are not providing supernatural solutions that meet the needs of men. Listen, let me tell you something. In the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, pain is real. The darkness that plagues people is real. You stand as a minister of, the, minister of the gospel, regardless the geography of your call. You must insist and ensure that you are providing supernatural solutions. Be ready for empty pews in our days today. If there is no genuine grace upon your life to communicate results, not just results of miracles, signs, and wonders, transformation by the word, that someone's come to your church or your platform or your crusade or whatever it is, and just two weeks after sitting under your grace, they are radically transformed. Nobody leaves what works. Every ministry rise, it rises to reflect the level of transformation and empowerment of the leader. The problem is hardly the structure. The problem is the leader. Are we blessed? Impact. Mark chapter 1. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh, 
Mark chapter 1 from verse 21. Let me just cut a few portions. And they went into Capernaum, the Bible says, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. This is Jesus now. Next verse. The Bible says 22, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Then the Bible says 23, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know who thou art, the Holy One of God. The Bible says, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried out with a loud voice and came out. As a result, 27. 27. Do we have it projected? I wish it was. But let's read together if you can find it. And they were all amazed. The Bible says that they questioned among themselves saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even unclean spirits. Hmm. As a result, 28, and immediately, someone say immediately, and immediately, 28, his fame spread abroad throughout all the region of Galilee. Listen to me. It takes impact and exploits to really enjoy fruitful ministry. John 15 verse 8 says, Herein is our Father glorified when he bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. No matter what kind of encounter you claim to have, it doesn't mean anything to people until that encounter translates into a dimension of the exegesis of scripture that profits them as far as enlightenment and transformation is concerned. And then you sustain the requisite level of spiritual power that it takes to provide supernatural solutions that, that solve their problems life applicable truths that they can use here and now and return back with results please do not downplay the problems of men people have serious problems every man can have a flourishing ministry every man can have a flourishing business to the degree to which you provide superior solutions superior solutions i made a covenant with god and with my destiny that nobody will ever meet me twice to be blessed once is enough if you meet me twice it should be for the continuation of your growth and transformation so you put a healthy pressure on yourself to go back to the secret place lord place something on my life when god was sending me i said god please don't send me with just a sermon don't send me with just a message grant me the grace to demonstrate and validate the things that you have sent me to do i write these things to you O excellent theophilus of all that jesus began to do and teach are we blessed let me show you a few more portions there and then we'll pray. Verse 32. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city, all the city, because they discerned that this man was a miracle worker, that the hand of God was with him all the city came and the bible says they gathered at the door and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffer not the devils to speak because they knew him verse 35 we'll stop at 37 because of time and in the morning 
rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed and the bible says and simon and they that were with him followed after him may 37 be the prophecy for your life and your ministry in the name of jesus the bible says and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee all men hear me there are kinds of graces when you carry only your tribesmen seek for you there are graces when you carry only educated people seek for you there are graces when you carry only uneducated and poor people seek for you there are graces when you carry only those along your field will seek for you but there are truths and graces when you carry all men all men all men regardless tribe regardless profession this is the grace that attracts not just a crowd but even attracts a quality of people that one person can come by grace and hold your hand because he was sent may that all men grace rest on you may that all men grace rest on your business may that all men grace rest on your ministry Jesus had all kinds of people come to him there were business people who came to him there were nobles who came to him the rich young ruler came to him politicians came to him publicans came to him little children even came to him there is a grace that draws all men is the same grace that came upon noah and all the animals started finding their way to his ark there is such a grace please listen to what i'm telling you i know what i'm saying you know you are leading when someone is following you if no one is following you something is wrong are we together and can i tell you this the presence of one ministry is not the reason for the failure of another not so there are more than enough people to create sufficient platform for impact where the carcasses are that's where the eagles gather when fire is burning on the altar john wesley said set yourself on fire and all the nations will come to watch you burn please stop giving excuses kill all the excuses and stay with god it's not because you are evil it's not because you are yoruba it's not because you are hausa it's not because you are south south there is a level of fire that nobody will ask where you are coming from people are desperate for answers and let me tell you this when they find those answers they will inconvenience themselves and stay there a politician with his dignity and education will go to a forest and meet a herbalist as tattered as it is hey turn back and the man will turn back and humble himself because he's desperate to win an election i gave an analogy somewhere and let me use it here as we wrap up don't feel emotional but during the NSAS protest, you know that once upon a time, states started identifying warehouses where they kept rice, beans, indomie, spaghetti. Do you know that that warehouse did not have a signboard? This is warehouse. The signboard did not have an usher. It didn't have anybody playing keyboard. It only had rice inside. It had rice, yam, spaghetti hungry people can smell where real food is listen to me somebody just meandered and looked at a building whenever they stop those warehouses they do it in the night because if they do it in the day hoodlums will come most people in a territory they don't know where their warehouses are and yet look at the skills that were suddenly invented people tore the zinc not with hammer that's what hunger can do imagine that you are that warehouse there will be no sleep for you while you are sleeping someone says look i hear that this conversion is starting in may but i'll be hanging around by april and still be warming up myself because i have discerned that your conferences are not ordinary that god is with you rabbi he said we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him 
Impact is what answers to resources. Impact is what answers to men. Nobody will come and open up their hearts to you for nothing. You must make up your mind to go back. Father, I am tired of standing on stage and saying, don't worry. I, I, I didn't prepare for my sermon. Whatever you hear, just believe it's of God. You must tell yourself, I will be sound in scripture. I will be sound in doctrine. Study to show yourself approved. The Bible says a watchman that needed not to be ashamed. Roll away shame from your life. Make up your mind to sit down. Be a student of scripture. Then lock yourself in the spirit. Generate power with God. Make a toskaba. Rekete beketeka. Embreke touch kabara let the sick not come and return sick may i not share the grace with sinners going back as sinners i made up my mind under god it is not my intention to know everything but in the area god has called me there will be no rest until you you see champions don't rest while they are clapping for you you set your for your face as a flint I was teaching in our other center and I told them something. I said, people commend me and say, Apostle, you are so good. And I said, compared to what? Compared to what? When people are clapping for you before you receive it, look at who is clapping for you first. If a mediocre is clapping for you, just laugh, but don't mind them. Go back and settle down and tell yourself, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Don't celebrate little things. Small impact. One person got healed. Out of how many? 70 people came sick on that crusade ground. Only two people walked out of the wheelchair. And you're smiling. Go back to a retreat. A herbalist can do that. Uncommon results. Am I stretching you? Don't feel bad. Those who produce results, the father prunes. So that you produce more. That the opening of your mouth is, is like the opening of the gates of the destinies of men. I vow to God that I will never stand on any man's pulpit and preach. And while I'm preaching, they're already concluding and saying, This man will not come again. I'm so disappointed. Nonsense no transformation no healing no salvation no blessing no nothing thank you sir for coming take no when you carry fire don't say nobody's inviting me there is a version of you they are looking for you have not yet become it be careful if only your friends are inviting you your friends love you the way you are the nations must call on your grace not just your friends are they the only ones listening to you the nation should call you strangers should come to you did the bible not say gentiles will come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising someone in one minute blasting tongues lord i'm tired of this level i will not be the same again in the name of jesus the christ of god i'm tired of business at this level i'm tired of ministry at this level i'm tired of just recycling sermons my people already are discerning my exhaustion take me to a higher dimension a higher face in the spirit Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. Your Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory you will put your angels charge over me jehovah jireh cares for me listen 
the last area i wanted to talk about was the issue of finance maybe another time if god grants grace but one thing i can tell you is financing ministry answers to impact nobody will come and bless you indefinitely for doing nothing the lord gave the word great 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 is not just those who are great great were those who were made by the one who the lord gave the word to ordinary men came to david in the cave of adulam the bible says there were men who were weak there were men who were in debt there were men who were in distress stop waiting for wealthy people to come make people out of your congregation from the power of the word that he's given you god is not only the maker of heavens and the earth he can make men see there are certain truths you cannot teach when you have dipped your hands in certain wrong resources you will not have the courage to say certain things are we together but please don't let anybody let you believe you don't need money in ministry is a lie oh. let me tell you in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty this name of Jesus we lift is very heavy it takes resources to lift him high the body of a 33 year old man called Jesus was hanging on the cross no prayer warrior could bring it down no fasting giant could bring it down it took a man of influence and wealth called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence with the king and ask for the body to come down and to put it in his own virgin tomb prosperity played a role in redemption reject poverty reject it I am telling you this but don't just reject it because you want to be rich have a kingdom perspective to it this obsession about money has made ministry look so ugly money 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 no it is impact money is a receipt that you have made impact when you buy something they don't give you the receipt before you pay they give you the receipt after the resources that come are attestations that you have changed lives there are three dimensions of wealth number one is the wealth that comes by transacting business you provide services you provide solutions and you are paid are we together now you package your value you serve it to a targeted consumer base it's called business the second level of wealth is called transformational wealth here you don't sell the value you raise people you lift people you enlighten them you impact them they return back with thanks to you you see the law of the reward system of the kingdom is whether your value is dispensed at a price or given free you must be rewarded but the third level of wealth is the area I want to speak into our lives now it's called sovereign wealth wealth by prophecy there is wealth that comes by the finger of God it's not a license for laziness it's an advantage that we have in the kingdom I shared with you my story yesterday that I paid for something for a woman some women and they blessed me and one of them said my son forever walk upon gold walk upon gold you never just give me two minutes there are certain dimensions of financial exploits in ministry you will never be able to enter until you know how to provoke the prophetic dimension of wealth the prophetic dimension of wealth is provoked through two things one honor two sacrifice psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me I'm not just talking about money see I will lie to you if I don't tell you this I will be deceiving you and God will judge me if I just tell you oh there are certain levels of mysterious dimensions of wealth you may have enough resources for your personal care but ministry are we blessed 
God is able to pick a man from any level. Believe me, wealth in ministry can give you rest. All these worries, some of us are here now, respectfully speaking. You love God, but there are bills, corporate bills on your head that the devil is using to give you stress. You can spend three hours, we think you are praying, but it's not prayer you are doing. You are just thinking and saying, my God, next Sunday will they lock this church? Unfortunately, the owner of the place, if you don't yet have your facility, does not care whether you are praying in tongues or not. Give to Caesar. One of the laws of being a peacemaker is to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. And Satan always, he will want to cripple your impact using the tool of the absence of resources because he knows that no matter how you are, if you do not have resources, it will not amplify your voice. Proverbs 22 verse 7, the Bible says the, the, the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant or slave to the lender. Reject poverty because of its effect to kingdom come. Reject poverty because of its effect to the quality of your life. Let me wrap up. Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club, most of you know him as that. One day, many years ago, I listened to him while he was talking. And he said, when God was calling him into ministry, he prayed and he asked God for three things. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me favor. Lord, grant me the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When I had that, I went back to my place of prayer and I prayed the exact same prayer. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me favor. I don't come from a background where there is anybody to support me. I don't have any uncle, any auntie, any senator, any governor that will say, take 10 naira. God has blessed you. No. If God sent you, let him go and prove himself with you there. Save Johnny. My life today is a testament that God is able to lift. That God is able to bless. This is a pastor's conference. It's just that sadly sometimes it's not good to share such... Many people think men of God don't know anything about money. Just because of the humility of people, a lot of people come me, I have money, I have 10 million, I have this. Listen to God. No, 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 I'm a rich man. You are poor until you can give to the kingdom without stress on you. <laughs> Having 10 million, 100 million, and all of, once it is still you, you are not yet there. When it becomes about him without inconvenience, then you are really wealthy. I'm not insulting your pedigree. I know that there are many of us here, God has shown us mercy. But let me tell you, it's nothing compared to where God can take you. And that he takes you to a place where you can still remain on your knees. You can still remain on your knees. Where you will not come back and look at your bishop and say, I just got a contract of one billion. I don't pursue politicians. I don't pursue business people. I don't look for anybody. When they come, I pray for them. Don't look for any basket there. Just go home. May the Lord bless you. I bid you good speed. If God leads you to sow, no problem. My supply comes from the one who sent me. And my obedience to the principles he put. Rise up. Let's pray. Let me encourage everyone here. We have a few hours and there will be a miracle service. But listen, I usually don't do this, but let me speak. Bishop, let me just obtain permission from you on this. If I were you, please do not allow evening to come without sitting down to ask God what sacrifice. Hear what I'm telling you. If you follow my teachings, you know that it's, it's not my culture to come and tell people, but I will be lying to you. This is what we did to rise. I will be lying and deceiving you if we just say, you must trust God for a grace. I came for a conference. I didn't just come to hear. Lord, what is the sacrifice that I must bring on this altar for myself and for my 
church or ministry if you do it for yourself you are the only one who will rise and then the trouble and the bills of the ministry will bring you down the laws of the kingdom do not fail please agree with god i'm not going to tell you anything but it's between you and your god we are leaders remember you are teaching others too except if you don't believe what you are teaching most ministers don't practice what they teach that's why they keep lifting people and they don't rise i'm sorry we'll reconcile after the grace but let me tell you this if you your blessing comes in your own obedience don't say give and then don't give yourself a sacrifice you bring before the lord with understanding lord i'm ready to break this hardship in ministry i'm ready to break this struggle i have today tomorrow i don't have i'm tired of this embarrassment the principle of seed faith is based on the principle of resurrection you can kill seasons by tying them to a seed when that seed dies the season you attach to it must die too that's the principle of seed faith so any season I want to kill in my life because I'm tired of it, I can tie it to a seed and bury it. You've heard my teaching. That's why it's dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know what seasons were tied to the seeds you are stealing. You don't know what someone is trying to kill. Just lift your hands in one minute and thank God for this conference. Lord, my life will never be the same. My ministry will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please for the evening is our final session together. May I please request if Bishop will allow. Please everyone you may do well to come with a prayer request. Just write down for yourself. For your ministry. For others. Your family members. By the grace of God if the Bishop allows. In the course of the service we will collate the request here and we will pray. That every Egyptian that you see, in the name of Jesus, come this evening, you will see them no more forever. The Lord bless you and the Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! The phase of development.